Okay, how's everyone doing? New names. Daphne, I know, she's seen you before. Hi, Robin, how are you? Catherine, Ian, Chris. Hey, Chris. Angel is here. Hi, Aaliyah. Christiana, Connor, Johnny, Duffy. All right, we're going to get started. So thank you for being here. And uh, if you are walking around eating your lunch, that's perfectly fine. That's still okay. You don't have to uh, hide your faces. It's like being in a classroom and uh, we eat, we text, and then we look around or we take notes and we distract ourselves, but we multitask and that's okay. So if you can switch on your cameras on, I'll appreciate it. Okay, so let's get started. So thanks for being here. Uh, we'll definitely make sure that we end no later than 3.59 so that you can get to your next four o'clock Zoom call. And I can try to add some value uh, in between from now to then as well. Uh, the, the, the today's conversation is going to be all about lead generation. And uh, I, I have realized uh, after a long time in my career, what that really means. And what I thought it was and what, have, what really it matters in, the, in, in our business today. So do you want to start a conversation by what does lead generation mean to you and how do you guys do it? What do you guys do for lead generation? I'm going to take a dab at it. Or I can start calling, calling people as well. So um, somebody unmuted. Uh, we want to talk about a lot of outbound calls. That's, that's, that's a way of uh, lead generation. Uh, Ian, what do you think? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I would say outbound conversations, connecting with different key peoples of influence and asking for referrals, and then also lead generating within your current network of connections. And, and do you do that every day? I make a focus of it an hour a day. Okay. That's cool. And the remaining seven hours is focusing on uh, servicing your business? Generating loans for the folks here at KW. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Uh, that's part of the lead generation because that's where you really need your money on that. Hey, Daphne, if you have any requests, if you can mute yourself, I think there's a background noise on your side. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, who else want to take a, a dab at it? Um, Chris, you want to tell us what do you do for uh, lead generation? Uh, I'm actually a new agent. I don't even have my uh, license yet. So lead okay. generation is a uh, pretty new topic for me that I haven't really explored too much. Okay. okay. No problem. Thanks for being here because you will, you don't have any bad habits. You can learn from the ground up. Yeah. So I'm going to share something that I created on a quick PowerPoint that once you start writing, there, you know, there's too many slides, but I'm going to go a little faster on them. So we can, and we'll, we'll email this because you all had to register before you came into this class. That way we have your email addresses and um, we will just email this PDF to you at the end of the class. So you don't have to take any notes, screenshots. We'll send this PDF to you. There's no proprietary information. So today's topic is lead generation, leveraging a powerful contact database. So where are you today? Where are you today with your lead generation efforts? Get into the habit of taking accountability for your actions and your progress. So when you get a chance, write down the lead generation activities you completed during the last 24 hours. Like Ian was talking about, he does one hour of lead generation and otherwise he's looking at other agents to do more loan generations because that's what his, the business he is in. What were your challenges? And discuss what you'll do differently in the next 24 hours. So I'll share with, with you guys a little bit more of what I have always encountered in my career. I hate calling people. I hate calling people and asking for business. And I realized after a long time, if I don't do that, I don't have any business. So what, 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 do I, what do I do at that moment? Either I change careers, find different ways of generating leads, or suck it up, get into the habit of practicing what to say. And what really bothered me was, I didn't know what to say. So it wasn't, it wasn't about, I was having a challenge of lead generation. The challenge that I was having was I didn't have good scripts 
for lead generation. So if, so if I identified the challenges I was having, I was able to fix them. And that really made a difference. So uh, you know, if, if you are not comfortable in all the major, most commonly asked objections, you are going to be have you're going to have a challenge doing lead generation. But pick pick any pick any common one, right? I don't need an agent. We can do the things online. My my, I'm thinking about it. We haven't haven't sold our uh, other place. My you know my husband wife play long good cop bad cop. Um, and we're just testing the market. We're just looking around. Uh, we are interviewing three agents. Like all those common ones. What they're basically saying is I'm in the market, but I can't tell you because I, I won't open my cards. I still want to have closed my cards close to myself. So a power of database, a record of your business success. Your ability to generate leads and therefore grow your business is tied to your ability to amass and systematically prospect and market to a large database of contacts. The heart of your business is your database. And the heartbeat of your business is your regular contact with your database. So Chris, you mentioned that you're new to the business. And when you are building your business, most of the people think I'm in the business of providing service to the clients. I'm going to open doors. I'm going to go to open houses. I'm going to show the properties and other stuff that comes along in, in helping people buying in, in the process of buying or selling. The real business is finding those contacts or those clients that are going to do that. Doing what, doing what we think is a job of our agent is the a, is a biggest lie that we tell ourselves or is being taught to us. We are not in the business of really providing that service. We are in the business of generating those contacts where providing the service is a secondary product of, to those clients. So don't think of your database as a file or a software program or a simple mailing list. It is a database, is a record of your business successes and its potential. In other words, it is your business. You will use it to record contact information for your leads, to track your interactions with them, and to assign them to appropriate marketing plans. Is it an investor, renter, buyer, seller? Uh, what kind of buyer, multifamily, single family, condos, this area, two years from now, tomorrow, six from now? There's no way you can keep all those things in your mind or on a piece of paper. That's what the database is about. So when you hear of doctors and lawyers selling their practice, what are they really selling? They're basically selling their client database. What they're telling, what they're telling to, the, to the buyer is, I have developed these clients out of which there's a probability of you getting X clients every year so you can make money. So Mr. Buyer, you're going to buy this database of people because you're going to expect to get a certain amount of return from this database. And that's what the value of the whole project is. So, I, so th that's exactly what you need to do for your real estate business as well. You need to create a database of people, understand what your return on that database would look like. And that's how you'll know how much your business looks like in the next few years. Go, go back to like the, the easiest way of doing it. Right? Take a three and a half, three by five index cards. You can, you, can, you can take that, put in a shoe box and start putting things alphabetically. That's one way of doing it. You want to get better at it? You make it an electronic spreadsheet. You can sort things by just clicking off a button. You can change names. You don't have to rule white out. You want to get more smarter about it? You can create a personal information manager. It is like a Microsoft Outlook. You can assign tasks. Remind me in three days. Remind me to call in five days. Repeat this task every week, right? So that's getting better in talking to a database. You want to get more smarter than that? You want to take a database management system. It's something called like a Microsoft Access that gives you other capabilities of sort them by everybody who's in this zip code. Sort by everyone who has the name starting with C. Sort by everyone who's an investor. You want to get more smarter than that? Contact a, uh, make it as a contact management system. Call a CRM or a CMS. A, a, you can pick anything. And I always say that in my training. 
you can pick any kind of a CRM system. You know, put a follow-up boss, contactually, conversion, uh, uh, Sierra, sync, commission sync, or command. Pick any one of them that makes sense to you. Command is free, or you can spend $200 a month with other companies. If you don't have any of these ones, and you don't have this, then what's the difference of which kind of a CRM system do you pick? Command, you, you, you decide to join KW for a reason, use command, it's free. You're already paying for it. Why would you go to a restaurant and pay for a steak and say, I'm gonna order something from the next restaurant? I'm paying for this, then use it. So this allows you to keep a track of all the contacts. How many times you have spoken to them? Who has a higher probability of buying? How many other people should I be contacting tomorrow? How many have I sold? How many relationships have I built? How many, how many referrals did I get from them? That all combined into one place is called a database. We just give it a bad name or bad annotation. It's such a simple tool. It's just a very organized way of you keeping your information. So which is, a, which is the best type of database tool to use? Any thoughts? What's the, which is the best type of database tool to use? Make it a little bit more interactive. I got one. Yeah. The one you use. The one you use, that's funny. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Catherine, what do you think? Um, I'm actually a new agent too. And I haven't gotten my license yet either, so. Take, take a guess. What's the best kind of database that you could? And, and the answer is not in experience. It's, it's not based on how many databases have you used. Um, <laughs> I don't really know. Ian was correct. The one that you actually use. And you have to use it systematically. It doesn't matter what you use. It really doesn't matter. So Ian was right on the money. It does not matter what version. Sync, Sierra, Commission Sync, it doesn't really matter. People say, you know, this company has a better software, that company has a better, it doesn't matter. Pick one. And they're so technically advanced that you can always transfer data from one to the other one. So pick one that you feel you're gonna use. Your contact database is the engine that drives your business. The size of your real estate business over time will be in direct proportion to the size and quality of your database. The following four laws will help you maintain your focus and on daily lead generation. Build a database, feed it every day, communicate with it in a systematic way, and service all the leads that come your way. Literally, that is our business. So let's just talk about it again, right? Build a database, you feed it every day, you communicate with it in a systematic way, and then you service all the leads that come your way. I heard this, I heard this uh, last time when somebody said, you, 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 can't, you can't reap the benefit of something. You can't, you, you can't withdraw from something you haven't made a deposit in. So if you don't feed into the database, the database is not gonna give you back any information that you can use. My battery is dying, I'm gonna go back to the other room. So, sorry guys. Sorry for being disorganized today. Yeah. Okay, what does build a database mean? Most agents remember when they first started real estate. They thought that for sure the business would just start flowing in the moment they received their license. They had always thought of real estate as the business of showing buyers houses and putting signs in sellers' yards. They soon realized that real estate is not just the business of servicing clients. It is first and foremost, the business of finding the clients to service. You can't really provide service till you find them. 
the key to making the most of your lead generation is to build a database of the people you meet in your business. And of course, stay in touch with them. Over time, that database will become the engine of your business. It will power your lead generation. It will produce a continuous flow of referrals. And in the end, it will be a key financial asset of your sales business. All those big words, all this BS, who cares, right? I'll give you, I'll give you a simple, simple philosophy. Look at your phone, go into your contacts. Let's do this quick exercise. Go to your phone. Everybody has an iPhone or Android. Go to your phone, hit contacts, scroll all the way to the bottom. What number do you see? How many contacts do you guys have? Tanuja, you want to take a guess? Daphne says 645. How many contacts do you have? How many contacts do you have in your contact in your phone? I have 588. 588. Who has a bigger number? 3907. Martin has 3907. He has taken the effort of talking to 4,000 people and asked them at some point in his career to ask him and say, sir, madam, friend, cousin, what's your cell phone number? That means he must have had a conversation long enough to talk to them to say, you are worthy of being in my database. And they probably added you to their database. How many of those 4,000 people are looking for an opportunity in real estate? It doesn't have to just buy, doesn't have to just sell, doesn't have to just rent, or doesn't have to invest. How many of them know others who are going to be doing one of these activities? It's the same social media concept, right? How many people will like your Facebook page if you posted something from the friends of a friend? You just go into this big pyramid expansion. Keliandra has 1925. Duffy has 673. Then we just said she had 500. Isn't the easiest way to start your database is to take those people and put it. So could, could you sort out the day you add on your phone, the day you added them to your phone? Can you sort out on your phone by searching and saying, what is their pet's name? Can you sort out the last time you had a real estate conversation with them, the people on your phone? You can't. So your phone is a database of contacts, but it's not a database smart enough where systematically you can get information out that can help you generate business. But this is a great place to start. How many people do you have on your Facebook? Probably 2,000, 3,000. I probably have 4,000 people. I have no idea who they are and what they do. However, they did say like, or they still said add when we send them a friend request. Either I sent to them or sent to me. That means if I ask them a question or if I stay in touch with them and I provide something of value, they recognize my name enough not to hit spam on it. So that's a great way to start your business as well. So when all the agents who are saying, I'm new to this business, think about it and say, who are the people that are walking, talking human beings that like me enough to add me to their phone or added me or I added them to my phone or my social media? Or the friends or the family members or an extension of them to the second degree that will be okay for me to talk to them and not gonna hang up on me. Because the biggest challenge that people have in sales is a, is, a, is a fear of rejection. If I call them, they're going to hang up on me and I don't like it. I, I, I don't like it. So you have to find ways that you can help yourself be a better agent. Here are all the different ways you can do lead generation. 
I'm sure there are 65 other one of them as well. Web searches, they can find you. They can respond to your advertisements. And this will come to you as an e PDF, so don't worry about you know, missing out on something. Responses to door knocking, random conversations, open house, business network, personal referrals, business referrals, past clients, builders, family, other agents, other agents in different states, uh, your lead generation services, expired listings, withdrawn listings, FISBOs, farming, mailers, seminars, yard signs, client parties. There's so many of them. Pick one if one, the other one you don't like. There's so many. Ha haven't met and met. So regardless of the lead generation source, the contact information you gather for your contact database can be classified into one of the two fundamental groups. Haven't met and met. People you have met in your life and people that you have not met in your life. Even if you know 50 or 100 people, and that's all that's in your phone and your social media, put them in your database. It all starts with one. But be so systematic about these people that you can make so much more money from the key people in your life. So there's so who are the haven't mets? The haven't mets are general public, right? People, you know, people walking on the street, you haven't met them, but they still might be interested in real estate. Or there's a specific target group. I'm going to target to everybody who lives in zip code 19130. So I haven't met them, but I know there's a target group. Or people who are in the ages of X and Y, or people who make a certain income, or people who are living in a high rise building who are renting and it could be a first time home buyer. And then there's the Mets. Your network group who might do business with you, your allied resources, people that you have done business where your mortgage company, title company, appraisers, landscapers, inspections, inspection reports, um, your other fellow agents, your advocates who, will, who haven't been doing active business with you, but will bring other people for you to do business with. And the core, core advocates, they are the ones that will guarantee do business with you. All you have to do is ask them. My biggest core advocate is my mom. Try it. Try, try with your mom or dad, depending, you know, you're, you know, just try with them. I asked my mom, I said, I, I, mom, I, 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 you got to help me. 30 day challenge. You got to find me a buyer. I was actually, I asked for a seller. I said, find me someone in your friend circle who's looking to sell one of your friends or maybe their kids or they're looking to buy something. She got me a $680,000 seller, one of the neighbors because she started telling each one of them, my son is in the real estate business. That's all she said. My son is in, the, is in the real estate business. And the guy said, oh, you know what? I was thinking of selling my commercial building in New Jersey. And she said, I will have him give you a call. And we did. And I sold it. Try it. Just, just try it. Don't be afraid. Just try it at one point. And just ask your parents or your brother or sister or somebody and say, 30 day challenge. Find me someone who's looking to buy and sell. They are your core, core advocates. They're going to talk so high of, highly of you, you might not be able to build your own resume that way because they love you. Here are some sources for building your METS database, your family, your friends, your neighbors, home, school, people you do personal business with, your grocery, uh, your grocer, your dentist, your sports and hobbies, your teammates, your former employees, coworkers, your suppliers, organizations you belong to. All those people are the ones that you have met in your life and are going to be able to help you. Feed it every day. Make 10 new contacts a day. Enter 10 people into your database. Write 10 notes in your database, what you spoke to them about. And you preview 10 homes a week. 10 homes a week. So you become the master of the market. 10 new contacts. So 10 new, enter them in your database. So you're building up your database. 
staying in touch with them, you're calling them, so you write 10 notes, and then you gather the information so you can talk to your clients if they ask you information. Growing a strong database is not a one-time or even a part-time activity. The contact information you collect will provide you with methods to add to your database. Expanding your METs. Once you put everyone into your METs database, your next challenge is to expand it. You have to stay in touch with them. How do you do that? Phone calls, personal visits, meeting new people through school, follow-ups, open houses, liking their Facebook comment, laughing at it, geographic or niche, mar niche farms, calling the sale by owners, expired listings, agent-to-agent -agent referrals, internet leads. Focus on the methods that are most productive for you and the ones which best suit your personality profile. You don't like door knocking? Do something else. You don't like phone calls? Do something else. But you can't say no to everything. You gotta pick a few that works for you, or pick a few that you like, and then become better at it. The four technique. Does anybody, anybody know what the four technique means? What's the four technique? Christina, what does the four technique mean, you think? I'm not sure. I'm very new to, so I don't even have my license yet. No problem. No problem. Can I take a stab? I just joined. Oh, there it is. Sure. It's the conversations that you have with uh, past clients, potential leads. It's what? Family, occupation, um, what's the R? Recreation and dreams. What do you want to do in the future? What's your, what are your goals? Perfect, Andrew. It's the, so think about these ones. When you, when, if people say, I don't like talking to strangers, remember in your mind food. So if I don't know, I'll pick somebody. If I don't know, actually, I don't know most of the people here, but uh, let's say Jigar. Right? I don't know Jigar. So I say, like, hey, Jigar, we meet at a, we meet at a networking event and i'm shy he's shy i don't want to talk to anybody so the first thing i'm going to ask him is uh, hey andrew can you mute yourself or seems like it's you're muted but still echoing you're so close to me probably okay um so how's family you know are you married how long you've been in philadelphia uh what do you like to do what games do you play did you watch a football game uh, are you into soccer? Uh, so we talked about family, you know, where you're originally from. You know, I see that, you know, he might be Indian with the last name, so I can talk and read about being Indian. Uh, you know, where do you grow up? So that's family. You know, then oh, is the occupation. What do you do? You know, then let's talk a little bit about his, his occupation. Then recreation, what do you like to do? You know, what games, sports, pick something. And then dreams. Why are you here? What's your plan? What are you looking to get out of this? What are you looking to get in the future? Where are you looking to grow? Uh, what are your plans? Uh, what business do you want to venture in? What do you specialize in? Like now I'm looking at the future conversation, make it more exciting. Simple key of four questions. Your family, your occupation, your recreation, your dreams. Any boring party can have a conversation starter. You are there to network. Might as well take advantage of it. The same thing with clients. You could ask them the same questions. Talk when you meet a new client, talk to them about the family. Who's in the family? What are you looking to do? Why are you planning to move? Why are you planning to move to Philadelphia? Why are you looking to rent? Why are you looking to buy? Your occupation. What do you do? I can help you figure out if you're a, a doctor and you're going to Jefferson. I help it helps me understand you want to be closer to work. I also understand you may have late nights. I also understand that you may want security because you may have certain packages coming in when you're not home. Recreation, that personalizes the relationship. And then dreams. What kind of a dream home are you looking for? What is an ideal situation for you? That's when the client starts looking at you as the confidant that they enjoy working with. You're not a door opener. 
you are their companion and you're helping them in the journey of buying, selling, or renting a, a place. You're part of the journey. We talked about the four, the four technique. I'll let you guys read a little bit more about some of the scripts. Their birthdays, personalities, spouse's name, what, what are their hobbies and interests, their children, children's names, dogs, pets' names. Your, and when you enter your contacts, it helps you systemize in follow-ups. You, you create a daily three-hour habit for contact updates and entry, not just sitting in front of a computer and entering them, but calling those people and asking and, and, and being staying in touch and asking for future business. Hey, Ian, you've been, uh, it's been, it, it was, it was great. You know, did you, so let's say Ian was an old client of mine who was rented from me about, uh, about three months ago. I should, if I call them, what am I going to say? You want to have a beer? No, I don't want to have a beer with, with Ian. I don't have a beer with everybody I'd rent a place to. I don't want to take him out for lunch. It costs 50 bucks to take every client out for lunch. So what do I do with Ian? After three months, what do I stay in touch with? Start thinking about what does Ian want to hear from me for? What does he want from me? You have to start thinking from a client's perspective. How do I add value? And what can I get out of Ian to help me as well? So if I just call Ian randomly and I said, hey, Ian, it's been three months. My, my database triggered a 90 days on all my new clients. And I love the opportunity of following up to make sure that you're happy where you are. Is there anything I can do to assist? Because in 90 days, people usually settle down. They get to know if the bedrooms are big enough for their furniture or there are, you know, maybe there's a life-changing event. Maybe there's something new that happened in your life that you're thinking of growing, you're expanding their, the, 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 the uh, uh, size of the unit, the neighborhood, maybe there's a job change, maybe you're getting married. Like, is there anything that I can help you with understand anything happening in your real estate needs? No, everything is fine. I love my unit. I plan to be here. Perfect. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to let you know that in our office we had a monthly meeting where we were talking about the benefits of having the lowest interest rates in the history of our life. And I learned so much. And, I, and you just came to mind because I knew when you and I spoke, reading in my database, that you are in the wealth management department. Because I forgot after ninety days, after talking to hundred people. But now, and I'm talking to him, and I, I understand you were having a baby and it's due coming in December. I thought of you and I thought it would be nice for me to at least get in touch with you to explain to you that if you were thinking of buying and creating wealth and leaving passive income for your family, I think you should definitely at least get a chance to read what I got in my office, right? Because you're a new agent. You have to say that I got some valuable information as compared to me generating the valuable information because you may not trust me. Hey, I know you, you were so new to the business. And are you now you're telling me that you're an expert in the stock market and you can explain to me everything. I've been doing this job for five years. No, no, somebody else gave me who'd been in the business for 50 years, much more valuable information I can share with you. Is it okay with you for me to send that email to you? And if you have any questions, we should talk more about it. Interest rates are historically low. And I know you have a 90 day notice period in your rental uh, in your apartment. If you are looking to rent for something, I think we should definitely start talking in about two months from now because it's a 90 day process to buy. And before your lease renewal date comes along, we should at least discuss with it how does the buying process look like? Would you be interested in learning more? Or anything of that extent. So now, if Ian was actually starting to think of buying real estate, guess what's the next step? You called him. 89% of the people will actually do business with the agent they first interacted with. Do you know that? 89% of the people will do business with the first agent they interacted with. And who's the first agent people interact with? is the one that helped them rent the place. Only 13% of the people actually get the opportunity of representing that client. What happens to the remaining 76% or 75% of the people? They just never follow up. The, I, and this is so interesting, you know, uh, uh, do, you know, when you go to a restaurant 
and you you had a wonderful experience you asked the person right the server and say hey what's what's your name you know, and you know Gaurav was your server that day i gave you the best service i ever could and it's the best meal of your life you love Gaurav so much you get a 30 percent tip six months later i asked you my name again you'll say who you cannot remember people's names you cannot be remember. you know there was another article that came out and said how come if i went to the same restaurant every single month and people knew me by face that they come to my restaurant all the time and they see the same people or the same you know the barber we have a lot of conversations with them hairdresser there's so many people we go to so regularly that recognize us by face they know when we came in for the appointment how many of them actually call you during COVID to ask you in which business to say hey you came and ate a certain kind of pizza or a certain kind of meal or a certain kind of uh, you know uh, haircut every x number of days or weeks would you like us to deliver that same food to you and create that same experience to you at your home because you cannot come to a restaurant how many of us got the phone call I didn't, but I can assure you if, if that Thai restaurant that I order every month from would have called me and they would deliver at my door and say, I'll wipe it clean, leave it outside, pay with my credit card, I would probably start ordering a little bit more and faster. I didn't want to go out, they want to pick it up, they want to touch anything, but later on, people caught up and said, hey, by the way, we are here and here's a new way of us doing business, which is safe. But the one-on-one -on -one relationship wasn't there. It was a mass marketing, like a sign and billboard on 95 and saying, look, we are here, come to us. But if you want to be a specialized agent, you have to go to them. That's the difference between 89% of the people and 13% of the people. You have an opportunity of capturing 89% of the business. Don't live with 13% results. That one-to-one -one relationship is what will define you different than everybody else. Updating contact information, contact history. The more contacts you add to your database, the harder it will be to remember relevant details about the lives and transactions of all your contacts. I can't even remember my high school people, my high school friends' last names. And if I was sitting with them for two years in a row, I could assure you I'll bet the, my lifelong earnings that I'll never forget the last name. I could count each one of them in, in, with my eyes closed. Sometimes I even I look at my friends' faces on Facebook and say, I think I remember them. Maybe just me. I just I can't remember things. And I can assure you there are certain things in your life you will not remember either. Put your database to work. You can actually systematically automate things so that you don't have to do it and not be stuck in front of a computer as an admin. That's the value of building a business. You can send direct mail, mail marketing pieces. Eight by eight is co comments. Uh, sim so eight by eight is a sim it cements your relationship with eight touches in eight weeks after you have made the initial contact. Once a week, you reach out to them with something of value for eight weeks in a row. 33 touch program. You, you give them something of value 33 times in a year. So basic eight by eight, I'll let you read it when I'm gonna send this PDF to you. You apply that immediately when you meet someone. Here's a week, eight weeks of a, a specialized script, what you could do if you, once you have a new client that you have just met. 33 touch program. You can do the eight by eight, which is eight touches, and then you add on top of that. I'll let you read all these things. It's, it's not a matter of me teaching you what a 33 touch program means. Here's, here's it spelled out. For, you know, 14 mailings or letters, eight thank you of thinking of your cards, three phone calls, four personal observation of observance cards for birthdays, anniversaries, and New Year or something else, and four holidays. Simple, simple process. If, you, if you're not staying in touch with them or if you're not staying in front of them, when the time comes in, 
they'll think of someone else. What's the first thing that comes to mind for insurance? Terrell, give me one insurance company name. Yeah. Like Allstate? Why Allstate? Because I have Allstate. Okay. Uh, pick another one. Geico. Geico. Why Geico? Um, I just remember the lizard or okay. whatever it is. Pick another one. Um, the general. Why the general? Because of the figure again. The um the figure that they have. Where, where do you see them? TV, really. They spend millions and millions of dollars. Again and again and again and again. And they did that 33 touches with you to find out what is the best time and place for me to be in front of Taro so that I can he can remember this particular way of thinking of insurance. If your Allstate guy screwed up and you had to pick the phone next because you are in an accident, God forbid, or you need insurance urgently, who's the first next one going to come to mind? Geico in general. There's a level mm -hmm. of trust built in because, because you've seen them so many times, you think they're good. Or at least you're willing to give them a chance. If you don't stay in touch with your clients or your friends or your have mates or haven't met, why do you think they'll think of you? If somebody's sitting down in a restaurant and say, you know what, I'm thinking of buying a place. Do you have any good agent? Nah. Or they're going to say, man, this guy sends me information all the time. I don't remember his name, but I'll forward that information because it comes every week. But every, every week is something interesting and nice and cool, and I love to read it, and I wait for it. So that's, it's not that they're gonna, they, don't, they hate your information as being spam. They love it because of value that they cherish. So unless you're staying in touch with them, how are you going to be that general or Geico? That's when you don't have the opportunity of owning the right, of owning their business. You got to be able to do that, especially in being new in the business. Can't expect people to say, I posted one ad on Facebook saying, Congratulations, I got my license, and they're going to remember to give you the business. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Be consistent, be personal, be long term. You can do mass mailing, you can establish a personal presence with them. You can, you, can, you, can, you can send a branded email or just a junk email, junk mail. You can read this more about when I give, send it to you. So the powerful contact database can help you grow your business. Build a database. If you don't have one, start now. Every single person you know in it. Feed it every day. We talked about the 10 new contacts. Communicate with it in a systematic way. And service all the leads that come your way. So that shoebox of leads turned into a monster with a database, it never gets bad. That's all I had for you in terms of the notes, but I'd love to talk more about your, your, some of your feedback and the questions or challenges that you guys are having. This is such a simple business. It's just not easy. It's, you know, it's just, a, just a simple business. You do certain things, it work. Work for them for work for like a dummy like mine. The love dummy like me. I'm sure it can work for you as well. Thoughts and questions, guys. Spend an hour with me and listening to my blabbering. So I hope you can get some feedback to me and I can hopefully I added some value to you as well. Good, bad, ugly, uh, I'll take it. I have a question. Sure. Um Tell me a little bit more about uh, kind of your your team and, and the lead generation that you guys do. I know you have a lot of past clients and, and a lot of sphere, but what, what other kinds of lead generation um, do, do you guys use? Uh, we have about 84,000 people in our database. That churns out very consistent leads. Everybody in the team is required to make some calls as well. Uh, we have a, 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 an ISA department that makes consistent calls in the database. Our listings generate a lot more leads as well. We do direct mail, send a lot of postcards. Our science brings in a lot of leads as well. We have a full-time person uh, answering the calls when even in the evening hours or at night. 
so 24 7. our website uh, we spend a lot of money generating leads because of our presence our phone our, we have retail locations in our team for our offices we generate walk by walking by traffic that come walks in and asks us questions as well uh, we have offices in some strategic buildings that generate makes us uh, the uh, neighborhood realtor for the not just the building but for the area uh, past clients we stay in touch with them we are probably one of the large one of the best uh, rated uh, team on zillow and realtor.com uh, we don't buy leads from zillow anymore um, I think those are open houses uh, everybody's required to open houses as well uh, in a team uh, everybody's required to uh, floor time for calls coming in um, we monitor everybody uh, who does not build the database and we push them to do it our team provides admin support to those people to help them build the database so if they don't have the time and they're too busy we'll sit down with them they can put things in an excel sheet and and uh, you know but that service is available to you guys as well we as a market center pay to scott leroy marketing team you just create your excel sheet and then they will our team will actually export that into command for you it's free of charge for you we're already paying for it so the services are available it's about how do i get that contacts out of your cell phone and your facebook onto an excel sheet that we can export into command and you can click on a few buttons in command with smart plans that can automatically start calling these people via you know just, just repeatedly and you have to sit down and say how would i like to stay in touch with my friends you know you have some friends that you text you have some friends you meet for lunch dinner or drink and then you have some friends you call them once in a while or some friends you send an email or some friends you only like facebook post there's so many different ways you can stay in touch with your friends it's a different relationship what kind of relationship would you like to build with your clients and that's that's how they will respond back to you as well Hopefully I answered your question, my friend. I, I know I went past the uh, answer of our team, but there's so many ways. Uh, and uh, another, another one is referrals. Uh, we get so many referrals from other agents in the country because when they go into uh, command and they search the agent section, uh, we are always fully, if you look at my profile, it has my photograph, it has my designations, it talks about the languages I speak, what I have I done, the number of transactions I've had, how big our team is, we talk it all like you know imagine people go online to look for uh, I, I, my, my, i'm thinking faster than my mouth is able to keep up but think about a restaurant you go to a new city and you're looking for a great great restaurant you're willing to spend 200 bucks for the restaurant because you have celebrating something you go and yelp and you find a great restaurant with amazing steak but there's one review which is four star and you find another one that is about 20 miles away, but it has 843 five-star reviews. Where are you taking your wife dinner for that thing? I'm driving 20 miles. Why would that, if your profile says nothing about you online and the client is looking, who's moving from Boston and they're looking online in Philadelphia and they see go on your realtor.com or Google Plus or, or Zillow review and they find out that you don't have a photograph, doesn't have contact information, no website doesn't exist, only says been in business for 25 years and i have five reviews and i have 843 guess who, who's getting the phone call for a referral i am it's your online presence that matters it's your business get your get 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 yourself marketable go online and search your name just try it just try as an a as a, as a client to see if a client was searching for me what do, would they find on me and if you like it great if you don't like it, don't wait another day. You lost a million dollar buyer yesterday that you didn't even know. It's called an opportunity cost loss. If you if you if you if you spend twenty bucks out of your pocket, it hurts a lot. But if you if you if you lost the opportunity of making ten thousand dollars, you don't feel the pinch. You just never knew it existed. How many of them did you lose? Try, try your name, go online and see what you find about yourself. What else, guys? It's very quiet. Well, Gaurav, I, I like how you recommend the first thing all new agents do is input everybody that they know. Um, 
after that, what would you recommend as like step number two, as far as, you know, new agent focus? Because I, now I know, like I was thrown into this, I'm on a team and they, I'm doing Facebook lead follow-up every day. I'm learning classes on how to, you know, um, tackle objections for, for sale by owners and expireds. I'm looking at databases there. Um, but what would be your outside of, I mean, I know a lot of the business comes from your sphere. So I, I need to go back and rework this and go, go back to my sphere because if it, I think it was 80% I heard at one point that comes from your sphere and then it went down to 60%. What, what's the figure on your sphere and how important that is? I, I, I would be lying to you if I knew the exact number. I don't, but it's pretty high. Uh, the problem with being a new agent in your sphere is that they know too much about you that you don't know the business yet. If you went to your best friend who's looking to spend half a million, they say, I know you enough. I am worried. I need to be able to rely on you to help me with my half million dollar investment. I just know you enough. Well, some of them are just waiting for you to develop your portfolio, you know, and, and so, you know, you do, you, you make some sales and you, you circle. So I have friends I called immediately in January and they're like, call me back in April. Great. And in April, I'll give you some leads. That's perfect. And also, you, since you joined a team, that's what your pitch is. It's not about how much I know. It's not about how, who I surround myself with. It's how, right. how much my team, who can I bring to the table to assist with every question that I need answered with. So you know, it's not right. investing in me. You're investing in my company and my, and my team. So what I would do is, uh, you know, it, during the COVID times, things are opening up. But if you can and you're comfortable, open houses is the cheapest and the fastest way to pick up buyers. There are people, more people out there who will tell you they've built their businesses based on open houses. Uh, mm -hmm. reaching, out, reaching out to everybody and staying consistent with them. So now if you had one person as your friend who said, call me in April, how many more people can you have in your database that are going to be able to talk to you in April and then in May and then in June and in July? So if you start building that database, you basically a numbers game. If I, if I know 100 people, one of them is willing to do business with me, that means I need to know 1,000 people so that I can get 10 people. If my return is 1%, I need to know that much more people. And how do I stay in touch with them? And you also have to think, what is the value that I'm providing? If I'm not providing anything different, and, and, and it doesn't have to be very unique, it has to be consistent. If, if, do, do, uh, wouldn't you want to know what your, wouldn't you want to know what your neighbor's house was sold or as in the contract or who in my building sold or who in my area sold and who's moving and John Smith is moving or Matthew McCormick is moving or you know and Andrew Polini is moving. I would like to know, people are nosy about the neighbors. So if you could tell me before I get to know that my neighbor is moving, I like you. You're not giving me something interesting. That's called farming. You farm to everybody, telling everybody what's happening in the neighborhood. You become a neighborhood expert. So you could, but, but, but mailing a postcard is expensive. So you could, do, you, so what you have, if you have the time and energy, print something, then take, be a door knocker. Leave something outside the doors. Uh, create an email database if you have the capacity of creating one. Create a Facebook group page for a, net, for, for a neighborhood and remind everybody, and if you're pat, uh, you know, could be of anything, the events that are happening, if you're, if you're a pet lover, focus on finding for, uh, for pets, uh, anything of value. So as a new agent, what, you, what you're doing is, you know, Facebook, uh, do, you know the, do you know the conversion ratio for a Facebook advertisement? Um, I've heard like one out of 100, and then I heard one out of 600. I mean, about a one one percent is a usual average on Facebook. There, there you haven't met, right? So people who don't know you now they're going to look at you and say, "Why am I going to do business with you? Let me go and find an online profile or the value you're offering." It's one out of hundred. So how many people are you contacting on a monthly basis? Thousand, because also remember. This is one who's going to respond to you out of 100. Doesn't mean one who bought from you out of 100. So now it's one out of 100 who'll speak to you. Now, if you gather 10 out of 1,000, out of those 10, 
five will be willing to meet with you. And out of the five that meet with you, one of them may end up buying from you. So there's an opportunities that leads into, you know, meeting and putting an offer and one of them gets accepted. So that would mean that I need a thousand people to make one sale. So how many more thousands of people do I need to meet to be able to do that if my conversion ratio is 1% on Facebook advertisement? But you're right, the conversion ratio of a have mets is much, much higher. So how many more people can I meet who know me or are being recommended by somebody? And if that conversion ratio is 30% or 40%, I basically get four out of 10 people. I could focus that on much higher. Hey, Andrew, do you, do you have that uh, uh, graph at some place, which maybe you can post on KW Philadelphia's page that talks about um, what percentage of business agents usually get from what source? There's, there's a, there's a, uh, it's available online. You know, if, if you can't find it, I'll get it. But let's I, post I have it somewhere on my laptop. I'll, I'll dig it up. Post on KW Philadelphia page, uh, you know, that we can all take a look at it. Uh, it's pretty high. People, people are able to get a lot more business from people who refer them business. But if you have ever rented to anybody, people always talk about, I'm going to go and find a first-time home buyer. The first-time home buyer is a guy you rented a year ago. Stay in touch with them, and they're going to end up buying it from you anyway. And how many other renters know other people in the age group they're going to end up buying as well? One renter should be able to give you three buyers. We just don't work hard enough to follow up with them and ask them for our business. So that's what you really need is a start. When you have one client, you have to start thinking how much more can I get out of the client by them believing in me and referring me business? Have a conversation with a renter and say, if I did a fantastic job, would you be willing to recommend me two other friends of yours that are looking for real estate? So ask them. Ask them straight up by a simple script by saying, hey, if I given you my 100%, or you know, like during the conversation, uh, you know, your, your, your lease got signed. And then during the conversation, you can say, I hope I did a fantastic job for you. Daphne, we loved you. You were the best. You were so nervous and you made us so calm and walked us through the process. It says, I'm, I'm trying to build my business and I would love to for your help as well. Would you guys be willing to help me out by recommending me at least two new people that you think are going to be looking or are looking in the next 60 days? And is it okay if I follow up with you on a weekly basis not to, be a, not to be a pain, but just to be able to help build my business. Are you okay with it? You think, you think the client is going to say, are you out of your mind? No way. Because I'd love to. We love you, Daphne. We'd love to help you. We're going to, we're going to help you. And here's, a, here's another trick. If you ever rent, you know, during COVID, it's a little challenging, but things are going to be opening up soon. Domino's has three $5 deals, and there's a $1.99 two-liter bottle of soda in 7-Eleven. Spend 20 bucks, take three pizzas, three bottles of Coke and a spoons and paper plates and cups. Guess who are they inviting in their house for free pizza? All their friends. For 20 bucks, that's your best lead generation. Gather all their database and you put that information and have a script ready and say, I was able to get them a great deal. There are great deals in the market. There are two months off on a 13 month lease. I would love for you to be able to get that information before it hits the market. If you share your email address with me, I will send it to you. You don't have to call me till you're ready for it. Guess what you got in your database? 10 new contacts that day. And guess what's gonna happen after they see your name again and again? Like Terrell said, General and Geico, because they saw your name. Who were the deal with the 89% of chances for you to be doing in business with? You, because you're staying in touch with them. That's the whole idea of being consistent and generating the business. But you cannot stop. You, you break the chain, you lose all those clients. You don't stay in touch with them. Somebody else got the, the opportunity of doing it. And there are people like me with 84,000 people who are, have hired four people to do it consistently for them. So you're unfortunately competing with people like me as well. So you have to know your competition and compete, but that doesn't mean that I'm able to call 84,000 people. 
But if you call the individual person, they will like you because you called. On my behalf, somebody sitting in Philippines is calling. Nothing against Philippines, but it's just a VA. It's not Gora. It's a different relationship. I can talk all day, but I, I, if we, we were supposed to stop at 3.59, it's 4.05. I hope I added some value. And if I just wasted your time, I apologize. Um, but I'm, I'm passionate about this business. And I think this business will allow each one of you to make a million dollars a year. It's not that challenging. Just don't doubt yourself. Do the basics. You'll succeed. And we are here to help. Me, Andrew, the whole team. You, you get stuck, reach out to us. We'll help you. All right? Reach out to me separately if you need me as well. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for uh, spending an hour with me. Thanks, Gaurav. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Gaurav. Keep belated. Thank you. See ya.